Okay, I'm sorry. We did not start recording our lecture. And also our lectures will be posted on YouTube. So if you miss a lecture or you like miss something um, that we said today, we can always visit YouTube as well. Um, and there will be no slip days for the homework and also no extensions. And, but we do have a general late, uh, late penalty of two points each for the homework assignments. Um, to pass this class, you need to earn 70 points in total. So that means that you could technically submit all your homework late and you will still pass the class. Um, you're also, we also require you to take weekly uh, feedback surveys and that's a way for me and Kevin to sort of like understand how to improve this course. Um, and at the end of this course, we have something called a hack challenge. Um, this is basically where you're paired up with uh, members from the back end course or from the design course or even from the iOS course. And you're put in this pod with all these different types of members and you're required to make an app from scratch. And super exciting, it kind of, uh, it kind of represents or kind of like correlates with the pod structure that we have on AppDev. So you can, you can kind of get a feel for what it's like. Oh, hello, to create apps um, in sort of like a more professional setting and also sort of mimics what the industry like uh, like team formations are like as well. Um, so this is a general course overview. Today we'll be going over just generally what is Android development. Also, um, just as a quick tour of Android Studio. Um, next week on week two, we'll be talking about how to create views and layouts. Uh, week three, we'll be talking about a lot of more conceptual topics in Android, which includes intense, um, permissions, uh, life cycle, a manifest. These are generally more like uh, advanced topics. However, like a lot of times, these are the topics that do create like unexpected bugs in your app. Uh, week four, we'll go over uh, list view and recycler views. Uh, these are sort of like list-like uh, layouts that are like very common in most Android apps, and usually they're the foundation for creating any Android layout. Uh, week five, we'll be talking about fragments, which is sort of like a way to create more complex views in Android. And then week six, we'll be going over networking, so how to um, connect your code with the back end. Uh, week seven to nine, um, we'll, we haven't decided a topic yet, but we'll be sending out a survey roughly in the middle of this course, or the middle, uh, probably around like week four and five, where we'll get your guys' gauge in terms of what topics you want to learn about. Some ideas we have in mind include uh, Kotlin, maybe like Android architecture, uh, material design. Uh, maybe even like career prep. Um, so there's a lot of topics we can talk about. And week seven is also when we start our hack challenge. That's when you'll do team formation um, and also when you'll start coding your app for the hack challenge. And week 10 is our finale. Um, do you guys have any questions so far about what I just talked about? Okay, so quickly, like why, why Android? Um, so like, I think when we're on Cornell campus, it's hard to understand why we should even learn Android development because most of the phones we see on campus are like iPhones. We also see a lot of like Macs. Um, but the reason why you should learn it is one, it covers over <laughs> three quarters of the global market share for mobile de uh, for mobile phones. Um, that means that when you're creating mobile apps, you're actually in Android, you're actually affecting over 2.5 billion people, which is actually really crazy. Um, there's a very active open source community surrounding Android. A lot of the libraries and third party um, tools that we use are actually from the open source community. Um, it can also be coded on all, like almost all operating systems, Windows, Linux, or Mac. So we have a very low barrier to entry. And it's used, uh, it's a common platform in emerging markets. Um, something we'll go over real quick is called SDK. Um, basically, all Android devices have a specific SDK installed already. Um, if you heard of like Android versions like Android 10 or Android 9, they're generally correlated with an SDK version. So currently, Android 10 correlates with SDK 29. Um, there's generally two numbers you have to keep track of when you're thinking about SDK. One is the minimum, one's a target. A minimum basically sets the lowest possible SDK um, for the device to successfully run. That means that your device has a lower SDK, the app may crash or may not even run on your phone. Um, target SDK is generally the SDK level that you code for for optimal performance. Um, currently, Google requires all new apps submitted to the Play Store to run on SDK level 28, which is Android 9. Um, I personally think it's very high, and I think that it doesn't, I don't even know if it covers 50% of all Android okay, devices. Um, let me do a few clarifications. Oh my god. All right, cool. Um, so. <laughs> Phones um, don't have an SDK level, they have an API level. That, that is the application programming interface, right? So when you have a phone, when you get a phone, you have an, uh, your phone may be running like this phone 
on this is uh, Android 9.0 Pi. That correlates to Android um, API 28. Um, the software development kit, or SDK, is what targets that API. So um, if you're using SDK 28 features, you can use special features that they've just developed for Android 9.0. If you're hitting a lower level, um, every single Android um, API is backwards compatible. So Android 9 would be backwards compatible with anything developed earlier. Um, however, uh, you might not be able to use uh, features in newer sets of Android uh, if you're targeting um, the API 21 or so. Um, however, um, there are two things that you need to keep in mind while developing. There is a minimum um, SDK level and the target SDK level. The minimum is what's the lowest that it can run at, what is the lowest that the features will run at. Um, that is how much market share you will be uh, have access to. And then there is the target, which is what you're hopefully targeting. Um, Google requires all apps to target SDK 28. You should be building minimums underneath that. Right, so we're gonna go over like a quick um, example to show like a simpler version of what Kevin said. Um, so basically, let's say I own like a OnePlus One phone. Uh, this is a very old device. Um, it comes pre-installed with Android 5, which is SDK 21. And an eatery currently has a minimum SDK 26. Um, that means that the app may not even work on my OnePlus One. Like, I don't know. I might not even be able to install it. And then that just makes me like really sad. <laughs> and then, but if I decide to switch out my phone, I buy like a new Samsung Galaxy S10. Um, which has a higher SDK, that means that I can use Eatery um, without being concerned about my SDK levels. Um, so the reason why Eatery has such a high SDK level is that, um, or a high minimum SDK level, is because we want to use some like special third-party libraries for waiting times, and also for summer layouts. And so we had to kind of like balance a trade-off between like, do we want, do you want to support more devices, or do you want to have cooler features in our app? And generally, when you work on apps, um, most likely for your hack challenge, you will have to make the same trade-offs as well. You have to think about like what uh, SDK you want to target and what SDK you want as your minimum. So this is sort of a chart of the distribution. Um, in general, you want to target around, or you want your minimum to be roughly uh, SDK 21 to 23. This means you support roughly about 75% of the Android devices. And this means that you're supporting devices with Android 5 and Android 6 installed. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? OK, so we'll be, I'll be going over like a super quick overview of Android Studios, which is an IDE that you will be using. And then Kevin later will be giving a demo on how to use Android Studios, also how to create a really simple project. Um, so this is sort of what the editor looks like. I realize you can't really see it here, um, but hopefully in a demo you can see it a lot better. Um, basically, the major components you need to know is that there's a project panel on the left side. This kind of shows like what files you have available for you. Um, in later lectures, we'll talk about the different files there are and like why they're different, how they're different. Um, there's also a toolbar at the top. Um, it has a lot of like really cool features, like there's like the run button, a lot of Gradle build. Um, you can run the emulator, which we'll talk about later, and a lot of other tools. Um, then you have the editor where you can type your code, and in the bottom menu bar, uh, where you can usually see like. Uh, information about how your processes are running and also like just debugging information. Um, another really important part of Android Studio is the emulator. Um, the emulator is basically a virtual device that you can use to test your code. Um, I think the, the devices only come in like different Google devices, but you can run your code on like Nexus images or also like Pixel devices. And you can also test your um, code on different API levels. So you can test, you can see how your code works on like lower levels, also like higher levels. Um, generally, the virtual devices are a lot slower than the physical devices. Um, and that might be because the devices take a longer time to boot up, but also be, it could be because like the code just runs a lot slower. So sometimes if you're working on very complex apps, it might make more sense for you to test on a physical device. And sometimes um, the device may be limited in functionality. I remember when we were coding for Eatery, um, the, map the map feature would not show up at all on a virtual device. And so you may find that as you're working on more complex apps for like the hack challenge, you may have to test on a physical device to know where or not your app works. And then we have the log hat, which is something that we won't talk too much about, but this is a way for you to debug certain, uh, just, just debug your app on Android. And it's like, oh look, I see a bug right there. We're gonna kill it with the log messages. Um, 
there's roughly four different types of log messages. Um, the most important ones are uh, log.d and log.e. Um, log.d is for logging debugging statements, and then log.e is for outputting error messages. Usually log.e is used inside try cache blocks, and log.d is generally what you use just generally overall. Um, so this is sort of an example of what you might see. Um, so let's say, for example, we have a string um, called name that's assigned to another string. Uh, generally, log log, logs in general take in two parameters, which is the tag string and then the string you want to print out. And you can see below that, um, that when you print it out inside the bottom menu bar, you'll see the tag string along with the string that you want to print out. This is really good to see where your code end up um, when you don't know what is running and what is not. It's also a good way for you to check in on your data and make sure you're pulling the right data. But most importantly, you can control F your tag. That way, for all the little parts that you want to debug of a certain thing, just control F the same tag you've tagged all of them with, and it'll all show mm -hmm. up in the console together. Yeah, and you can also, there's also a filtering feature in the bottom menu bar, um, so you can filter by the tag string as well. But yeah, we're going to go straight to the demo now. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, so. All right. So, can everyone uh, open up? Uh, does everyone have Android Studio installed? For, uh, first question. Uh, how many people here have Android Studio installed? Raise your hands. All right, full class. Let's go. Um, so, uh, everyone, just launch Android Studio and. Uh, give me some kind of indication when you guys have got that going. Good? Oh, uh, yes. It, it is a bit hard to see on the screen. Um, would you like me to dim the rest of the... I'm going to... Hold on. Um, are you guys fine if I just turn off the lights in the room? Yes? That's a yes? All right. Is that any better? Yes. All right. Um, so uh, let's all start out by opening a brand new Android Studio project. Just click this button right here uh, to start a new Android Studio project. Um, so we will generally always start out working with an empty activity. The activity is the screen that um, will show up on the device. The activity is um, essentially, each and every part, uh, sub part of the app is called an activity. Uh, it's the screens that you'll see from one thing to another. Um, an empty activity is just blank, uh, ready for us to all start out and play around with. So we'll choose that as our main, uh, act, as our template activity. They have a bunch, uh, okay, I'm going to go back for a second. They have a lot of great starter code if you want to develop apps of a certain nature. So if you want to make, like, say, a copy of transit, you might start out with the Google Maps activity. They've already preloaded all the libraries and Google Maps features you want in there. You might start out with a login activity if you're doing something like Polo, uh, full screen activity if you're doing a game, whatnot. So they have a lot of great code in there. It's just that when we're teaching and showing you how all these new uh, layouts and whatnot work, we will likely start out with the empty activity. From here, name your application. So your application has a name. This is the name that shows up on the top of the app. This is the name that shows up uh, on the, uh, when you open up the app drawer and you'll see the application name. This is what shows up there. Um, give it a name, something other than my application. Uh, for our purposes here, I'm just calling this project one demo. Um, so underneath that is the package name. So every single uh, Android app has a package as well. The package is what it's known as on the Google Play Store. So um, a popular app that you might have a package, uh, a popular app's package might be, say, com.google.maps for the Google Maps app. Um, it comes under in this URL, flipped URL style. So com. Uh, well, anything. Dot, um, generally, whatever your company's name is or your organization's name is, and then whatever the app is. Um, you can make this anything you want. You could do com dot whatever your name is dot um, your well, project one, and that will be fine. Just make sure that's 
if you're making a commercial application, make sure this is distinct and unique to your application. If it conflicts with something else on the Play Store, it's not going to work. Um, find a place to save it. So uh, save it somewhere that you have a, enough space in. Android apps generally won't take up much space, maybe um, one to 200 megabytes. And then choose a language. This might default to Kotlin. This is important. We're teaching in Java. Um, Kotlin is basically the new standard, but we wanted this course to be accessible and quick to, for all of you to learn uh, coming from Java. So we will be uh, choosing Java here. Minimum API level. So this is what we were talking about before. This is the minimum um, amount uh, OS that a phone could be running on to run your application. We will generally be targeting API 23, uh, which is Android 6.0 Marshmallow. This will hit uh, apparently approximately 100% of devices. Thank you, um, Android Studio. It will give you an indication of what, how much it will actually uh, target. So if you're targeting Android 7.0, it will target about 37.1% of devices. 6.0 is 62.6. That read 100 a second ago. Did anyone else see that? All right, um, and then just click Finish, and it will create a new app. This might take a little bit of time. So a few quick things about uh, Android Studio. Android Studio is based off IntelliJ, another very popular ID for Java in general. You might find it used in um, courses like CS3152 game design. Um, so IntelliJ has this general layout. If you've used IntelliJ before, it, great. Um, it will take a bit of time for Android Studio to start up because it is first indexing uh, all of the files it's just created and syncing it with Gradle. Gradle is the building system that Android Studio uses and that Android in general uses to create jars and APKs. Um, up until it's done building, your stuff on the app won't show up in the right format. So now it's done. Um, has it been the same speed for the rest of you? Uh, thumbs up if that's a yes. Uh, tell me when it's built. All right. Uh, I think I'll jump ahead real quick. So building, this is gonna be the part where it will show up with an error if anything goes wrong here. If this is missing a semicolon here, um, this is where uh, that will fail if I try to run it. So it'll attempt to build, run tasks, and down here, it should fail due to missing, oh, come on, don't do that, uh, due to a missing semicolon. So error, semicolon not found. You see how long it takes for this? Um, so, uh, and IntelliJ and Android Studio are both very kind in that they will give you a red underline if something's wrong. And on the sidebar over here, they'll also show you where something is wrong. So uh, there is a little tick of red that says, uh, semicolon expected. So it should fix most of the syntax errors off the bat for you. Um, all right, so let's go a quick overview of what it's just created for us. So there is the uh, XML file uh, called activity main.xml for the main activity. What this is, is the layout of what the screen will have. There are two ways of viewing these, uh, just the raw text XML here, which will give you that. And then there's the design view, the drag and drop designer for creating an app. So in the drag and drop designer, you can pull in a button directly and a button will have been made. Um, now, there, uh, now, this will show up in the text as well. So you'll see that a button has been created. However, um, this being a this being a constraint layout, it wants constraints to either side and whatnot. This is all something that you'll slowly learn as you go through Android Studio. Um, so this is a constraint layout positions things. We'll be covering these more in depth in the next lecture. Um, yeah, so you'll see that this is a nice drag and drop designer. You can change where everything is. You can change how much everything is uh, bent towards one side or the other. This is the drag and drop designer. Of course, uh, for more delicate changes, for more specific changes, you might want to be using the XML and just editing it raw instead. Um, there's a few other folders I'd like to draw attention to. So uh, on, in the project view on this side, right, 
you'll notice there is a res, a resources uh, tag. That is a folder of all the resources. You'll notice that this XML file isn't actually in the Java source code up here, but it's actually in the layout resources down here. Um, from there, you can find all the things that have been made for you. So currently, they've also created like a, um, they'll also create a colors.xml file for you to save uh, static colors you want in there and a strings.xml file for you to save the strings you want in there. So the app name is currently saved in there. Um, how you use these things is um, you go into, say, the text of this button. This button read uh, button, right? However, if I go into strings and let's say create a new string called uh, whoops, called button text. It doesn't have to be the same text. There we go. Um, so if I create a new string called button text, then in the activity, I can choose the text to use at string button text. This is how um, Android prefers you to do stat strings uh, and something we'll, we might have on the assignment. So now, how would you access this button from here on out? Well, currently you can't. This button doesn't actually have a name yet. So um, how you access a button uh, or any kind of view on screen is by an ID. You have to give it an ID. So this button currently doesn't have an ID. Let's give it one. Uh, text button. And now it does. And now it will show up here as the text. Oh, wow. No, I changed the layout name. Never mind. That shouldn't be it. <laughs> You can give, yeah, so you can give anything a name, including the layout itself. So this button had an idea of button, now it has the idea of text button. How you access that inside your code from there is very similar to, how many of you have worked with JavaFX? It's very similar to JavaFX. So you'll uh, import button here, right? Um, sometimes it'll automatically import, sometimes it won't automatically import. Um, let me teach you a few Android Studio shortcuts now. Um, if, it does, if it's not imported and it can't find a symbol, it will help you with that. It will give you suggestions like this. So um, there is, uh, it, there's an underline under the button, and it's telling me to hit Alt-Enter if I want to import Android widget button. I do that, and the button's been imported, just like that. Uh, IntelliJ and Android Studio will handle all of your imports and all of the little nitpicks about syntax. Um, so I want to create a button. How would I access the button? Well, let's set the button uh, to something now. How would I set it? Um, there is a function called find view by ID. This is how you access buttons in the Java um, in Java programming for Android Studio. So R means resources, dot ID, so all the ID resources in R, dot, and then text button is what we just named it. So this is how you'll find out that your, uh, this is how you set a pointer to your button in Android Studio. Um, yeah, cool. So uh, to do something fun, let's set the button text after you click it. Uh, let's give it an on-click listener. So look at that. If I just hit uh, a period after calling a method on button, it'll give me a suggestion of all the things that button can do. And generally, they have put the most commonly used ones at the very top. Set on-click listener. From there, I can create a new on-click listener for the view. And then from there, I can do whatever I want. So the button text, after you click the button, so there is a listener to listen for when the button is clicked, and it will ask, uh, and when that button is clicked, on click will fire. But we'll, um, and then you can set it to do something. So you can set it to set the text of the button to hello. Cool. Now we have an app. This is 
somewhat completed an app now. So if you press this button, it should change it to hello. How would we test this? So from here, we'll um, walk you through the virtual emulator and the virtual devices you can make. Uh, if you go up to the top up here, there is a part where it will give you options for emulators. I already have one created, but let's just open the AVD manager or Android virtual device manager. From here, we can create new virtual devices. So these are all devices that uh, Google has pre-made for you. Uh, and preset for you and you should be able, and the main feature of having these is that you can test on different versions of Android and different screen sizes and uh, to see how your app will look on different screens. In this case, if you don't have an Android device, this will be your best way of testing your apps. If you do have an Android device, um, if you go into settings, there is a setting called enable USB debugging. Your app will run a lot faster uh, just being sent from your computer to your phone than it would be to be sent to a virtual device. Um, so let's create one based on the current Google Pixel 3, uh, actually 3A, one of the most popular phones out there right now for the budget market. Next. You will need uh, a system image, which is the, um, which is a, it's a, it's a condensed version of the operating system that Google will provide that will run on your computer. So you can get one for Android Q. I believe that is, uh, I believe that's Android 10. Um, and then it will offer download links to all of them. Uh, currently, I apparently have none of these downloaded and I'm guessing, uh, okay. I have a separate one downloaded. So, so just so you all can follow along, let's download one of these. Let's say, let's run on Android Pi because that's, um, API versions are backwards compatible down. So you want the, so having a high API level is probably a good thing if on the device side. So I'm just gonna click download and it will automatically do so. Uh, do note, these take a while. Um, so actually this is going to take a while. I'm not quite gonna do that. Once it's been downloaded, this download sign should disappear, and then you'll be able to run your app. So over here is the x86 image uh, that I already have pre-downloaded. Um, in the meantime, you should all download like one of these uh, just for your own testing purposes. It, uh, any questions so far? Sorry, I've been rushing through these. No? Awesome. So um, it will give you a few questions about the configuration. What is the uh, screen resolution? What is the version of Android it's running on? What would you like it to start up in? Portrait or landscape? I don't know how many of you will be making a landscape app, but good for you if that is the case. There are um, a lot of features that we'll mention later on about that. Um, emulated performance, automatic, uh, and then give it a frame finish. And that'll create a new virtual device. So there, uh, I can now run this device, turn it on, and it will do so. Now, uh, this is my pixel. Oops. Yep. So this is the new Google Pixel 3a that I've just created. It will boot up. It will be running on my computer as a virtual machine. As such, uh, you hear my computer spinning up. This is the downside of running um, a virtual machine. These things are pretty power intensive and will slow down your computer a bit while running them. Ta -da. Let's just wait for it to boot up. All right, cool. In the meantime, a few other things. Logcat, Leslie gave a quick overview of this. Take a look, this is what um, the Pixel 3a is doing. That's going by really fast. Uh, you'll notice that it currently has not selected any debuggable processes, but it is showing up with a bunch of processes currently running on the device. You can click any one of those to zoom in on exactly what that process is doing, uh, if it's debuggable. Um, if you do, uh, 
Yeah. So there are different levels of, and uh, there are different levels of system printouts. So log.d is log.debug. Debug will show everything debug and higher. Essentially, everything debug and higher means that um, it will show all the debug messages, all the info messages, all warnings, and all errors, as well as the certs. I don't know what those are. Um, if you click error, only red messages will show up, only things that have gone wrong in the OS will show up. You'll still notice that these things are flying by. This is why it's important to tag whatever you want to do. That way you can look it up by looking dot play dot, uh, hold on, play dot Google. And then you'll find everything that has Google Play in it. Uh, let's say this one says, mm, yeah, if you were looking for a specific exception going on, that's where these come in handy. That way this thing is just scrolling by at the speed of light. All right, um, back to the device. It started up, it's, uh, it's a working Android device now. You can look at all the apps on it and whatnot. So after it's started up, you can click this button up here, the green play button, to run your app on whatever it's connected to, be it a physical phone or, like this, a virtual device. Um, Gradle will run a build, so this will show up down here. Here's the progress bar for it. Uh, and it should show up on the phone in three, two, oh, come on. Do this for me. There we go. So now we have Project One Demo. Here's a button. You click this button, it says hello. Ta-da! Um, not very impressive, yes, but this is an app I just built in the past 10 minutes. So how would you debug? Well, in here you would set a debug statement. Uh, so like you could say log.d and then set a String called test. Testing. Working. So while the app is still active, you can click this button again, and it will rerun it on the phone with all your changes. So now, if I go into Project One Demo and go to Debug Statements, I click this. Under the name testing, it's asking if this is working. Uh, so that will be how you debug in Android Studio. Though there is actually breakpoints and debug statements if you, uh, breakpoints in the debugger if you know how to use those. So you can click on the side of the code and then run it in over here is debug run. This takes a bit longer. And it will stop it on the processor cycle when it hits that line of code. And you can see everything, all the variables that's created at the time. Um, if you haven't used this feature in your classes thus far, now is a great time to learn. These are super useful for developing anything, uh, debuggers. And from there, I can play. And the rest of the app should run just as normal. Awesome. Uh, Leslie, anything I didn't cover? Yes, okay. So, over in Tools, you'll find both the ADD Manager that we just played around with and the SDK Manager. This will show you all of the SDKs you may or may not have installed. So, over here is where you can click to get new SDKs and download them. Um, so, I don't currently have a version for Android Oreo. We recommend that you download a version for API 23, uh, so Android 6.0, and potentially one for the newest stuff in case you want the newest features. Um, there are, similarly, there are SDK tools that, you have to, um, that will go along with all this. But yeah, so if I'd like to grab a version of the newest Android SDK for Android 10.0, I'd hit Apply. And then it will tell me what it's about to install and how much that's going to take up. Um, and then Android Studio will automatically install all of this for me. 
Anything else? Cool. Um, any questions about this demo? No? No hands raised? Oops. Yeah. Let's have it to go in the background. Any questions? Um, we can. Um, where, so the demo code is likely going, to, actually, yeah. The demo code is to prepare you for our assignments. Right? Um, our assignments, if they require um, a, if, they're, if we expect them to take a while if you're building from scratch, we will give you pre-made code for the assignment, like a uh, existing uh, sample code for it. Um, the demos, I don't think we're planning originally to, no. Um, so the demo code, I don't believe, will be online. Yeah. Um, however, the lecture will be, and anything we think you will need for the assignments will be. All right, so I think we might finish in time so that uh, the back-end students would... Oh, yes. Um, is it right if uh, we turn on the lights? Cool. Uh, front dark seats lit. Yep, sorry. Cool. Speaking of the assignment, let's go through that now. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way. So, action items. Please make sure that you guys are all enrolled on Student Center. Uh, add yourself to the Piazza. And the first project that we create will be due on Sunday, uh, on March 1st at midnight. Um, should we discuss the late? Yeah. So late assignments will be penalized by two points out of the 10. Um, you can submit that for up to a week after the deadline itself. Um, so don't feel panicked if you have to uh, work on something for a different class. Uh, the penalty is minor in the scope of an SU class. Cool. So on to your first project. It will be mostly like what you've just seen. So the objectives of this is just to familiarize yourself with Android Studio. We've only been playing around with it for the past half hour, um, and this is a chance to get um, we're familiar with the uh, ID uh, with the ID that you'll be working in for the, next, for the rest of the semester. Um, so uh, you'll just create a new project with a new activity, uh, and then recreate this following UI where it just says "Hello World" in the center. Um, there is a seek bar up top. There is a button to the right. There's a progress bar to the left, and then you'll put your net ID in a small text view below that. Um, figuring that out will be really the challenge. Uh, when you click this button, the net ID should change to Welcome to Android Development. Um, we'll have a Piazza post up soon on how to submit your project, and we'll write up a set of guidelines on um, how we want it to be formatted. Um, in addition, we have several side quests. So, a younger, more attractive language. You can complete this project in Kotlin, uh, the future of Android development, a more flexible language, and something that we don't really have the time to cover uh, over the course of these 10 weeks. Um, you can try out uh, making some advanced controls, such as clicking the button cycles the uh, net ID with the other text, and then one more line of your choosing. So it will cycle through them instead of just being one quick change permanently, and you have to reload the app to reset it. Um, and everyone does this once where um, you find out that Android Studio has colors and that color values can be set by the code, and then people just make it go disco. So um, that is the third optional side quest. All of these will not be worth any extra points, but will gain you favor with the instructors. Um, Wait, to clarify, they will earn extra points for doing these. Oh, never mind. Yeah. You so will earn extra points for doing these. This is an SU course. Uh, yeah, so after 
you finish the assignment, we have the weekly feedback form and academic integrity guidelines are the same as the rest of the university. They will be found right there. Um, so this will be the first assignment due in about two weeks. Good luck and have fun. Yeah, and then this is currently not posted, but we'll post this on Piazza right after this course. And if you have any questions about how to do anything, either that's like in our demo or in this homework assignment, feel free to come to our office hours. Um, we have, we basically cover every single day of the week, so don't feel pressured to like have to come on the weekend office hours. Um, also, if you want to review what we've just talked about and what we've been discussing, or just want to get a head start on future lectures, we have the entire textbook up at androidcourse.cornellapdev.com. So here you'll find our website our, uh, that has the welcome page, the syllabus, which has all of the TAs and all the office hours we will be running, as well as the schedule for the rest of the semester. Grading is all up here as well. Um, you have, so everything we've talked about in lecture will, is up on the textbook, all the stuff about SDKs, the editor's layout, um, project panes, toolbars, the works, um, SDKs, it's all up here. Um, what we'll be covering next lecture will be views and layouts so that we can get started on making um, genuinely attractive apps that will fit right in on the Google Play Store. Um, yeah, so thank you all for coming out to our first lecture. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to come talk to us afterwards or like right now. So yeah, thank you for coming out and make sure to enroll on Student Center. Mm -hmm. That wraps. How do you stop recording?